Multi-sport athletes have the challenge of not only training and racing in different sports, but also getting their body into the best possible shape and condition in order to perform optimally in all of them. Triathlon, however, takes it to another level as the sports of swimming, cycling and running have such different demands on the body. So that leads us to the question of what is the best body type for the multi-sport of triathlon? I'm going to be taking a closer look at the successful pros to find out if there's a general consensus as to what body type or shape is best. But before we start with triathletes, I want to take a look at the bodies of the top swimmers, cyclists and runners. Swimmers are notorious for being tall and having wide shoulders and quite often then a triangular shape with narrower hips. And world-class swimmers are known for their large wingspan, so long arms and quite often a longer torso, and then really mobile shoulders and upper body as well as ankles. But you can't ignore their feet, and it isn't a prerequisite to be a world-class swimmer, but having big feet helps. And you might remember the multiple Olympic champion from Australia, Ian Thorpe, who was famous for his size 17 feet. Top level athletes in any sport are really highly tuned and lean, but swimmers do have a slightly higher body fat percentage than say runners, because fat actually is less dense than water, so it can help with buoyancy, which then leads to an improved body position. And when it comes to open water specialists, this becomes even more significant because it also contributes to helping them stay warm. There are actually huge variations in body type within professional cycling. And this is down to the fact there's such different events which obviously have different demands on the body. Take track cycling, for example. It's obviously on the flat velodrome, so power really is key here. And you tend to see athletes being a little bit larger, quite often taller and with more muscle. And then you go to road cycling, and they've got different demands again, often with mountain stages and multi-day races. So endurance becomes a key part. But power to weight ratios become a lot more important when you head into the mountains. And this is when you see, again, a different body type within road cycling. because so you'll have some athletes going for general classification, you'll have those mountain climbers, but you also have sprinters. One thing all cyclists do have in common, though, is an extremely slight upper body in comparison to their legs. There's no need for unnecessary muscle on their arms, as that's just going to add extra weight that's not needed. And also wide shoulders aren't going to help with that aerodynamic position. Runners, like cyclists, have to battle against gravity. Therefore, the lighter they are, the less energy and power output required to propel them forwards. Now, all world-class runners are going to have a very low body fat percentage. However, the body shape and type can vary greatly. Take, for example, your sprinters. They're large and muscular, and then compare them to, say, a 10K or a marathon runner. Well, the contrast is pretty extreme, but it reflects the demands on their body for their specific events. Swimming many miles as a young athlete quite often develops broad shoulders, which can lead to carrying unnecessary mass for running and also actually increase your frontal drag when you try to get into an aero position with cycling. Then again, cycling can develop strong quads, hamstrings, glutes, and probably give you unnecessary body mass that you need for running and also potentially lead to those heavy sinking legs when it comes to the swim. Well, you get the picture here. Yes, all three sports will develop your cardiovascular fitness, but they don't necessarily cross over to benefit each other. So that leaves us with a question of what should a triathlete actually look like? What weight, what muscle distribution is optimal? How tall, how much flexibility? Well, to help us out, I went to ask the pros their thoughts on this. There's so many different shapes out there. Like you can look at anyone, you can look at Daniela and be like, okay, she's however many world time world champion. She's like strong, fast, fit. Then you look at someone like a Rini who can run like a sub 250 marathon, like, okay. I, I remember coming into this sport, I always like idolize Rini because we have like similar, we're like short but strong. And I was like, okay, she's one Kona, like you have the similar body, like <laughs> it's possible. Because then you see swimmers, like the girls that get out of the water first and you're like, man, I need to like start lifting because I don't have any like upper body strength. Or... As well, you look at an Ironman athlete and Generally, um, you know, you want to be solid. You want to be, um, you want to be muscular. You want to be strong. I think for for an Ironman distance and even 70.3 as well. But you look at the ITU guys, and it's all about running really fast. And to run really fast, you need to be quite lean and uh, and sinewy. So you look at a lot of the top ITU guys. They're quite quite skinny. But then the further you get up, the kind of more uh, 
solid and muscular the athletes get. And I think, uh, yeah, it's just the demands of the longer race. You need to be strong. So I think for triathlon, probably long and lean is going to help. Not too tall, but, uh, you know, having longer levers definitely helps, you know, in terms of recruiting power. Um, and I think if you're somebody that is naturally lighter, power to weight is a huge thing. Because I think the hardest thing is if you're not naturally light and you try and lose a lot of weight, you compromise power, you compromise hormones, a whole host of other things. So I think if you're probably naturally smaller, it's helpful. It's great to hear the pros really emphasizing the importance of embracing the body type you have and making the most of that, as well as balancing the real difference in the three sports that you train for. But we also need to address the difference between a sprint or Olympic distance triathlon and then the demands of racing, say, an Ironman distance race. Not only does a sprint distance race last just around an hour, compared to an Ironman distance race that would be eight to nine hours for a pro, it's the difference in emphasis of the sports that makes such a difference. So if you look at ITU racing, so sprint or Olympic, the swim becomes more significant because making the pack is so crucial for the bike compared to an Ironman distance race where it's more of an individual effort. The bike in draft legal racing is usually less crucial other than the ability to have extra power there to affect the change in pace when breakaways might happen as opposed to long distance racing when it's very much about maintaining a set power for a longer period of time. And then the running in both long distance and short distance triathlons is obviously crucial, but in draft legal racing, it can quite often come down to a pure five or 10K running race if the pack have stuck together throughout the whole event. With those differing demands in mind, you might expect to see the Olympic distance races with slightly broader shoulders for swimming strength and a slighter build for running compared to say, long distance athletes that tend to be a bit more muscular and have that power that's really required for the long and individual effort on the bike. The environment and the terrain will affect who's favourite for a race due to their body type and their ability to deal with the heat or the cold or the hills or the flat. Now larger athletes for example will find it harder to actually keep their core temperature cool when it comes to hot environments which isn't ideal for those type of athletes when it comes to the Ironman World Championships which are held every year on the hot and humid Big Island of Hawaii. Now this is unfortunate for the likes of Ronnie Shilnick. He's the first to admit that those conditions are not perfect for him but he has to try and deal with them as best he can. And then you get the opposite athlete, a much slighter Bill Patrick Langer, who actually excels in those conditions. Hills don't necessarily suit the heavier athletes as it's going to require more energy to get up the hills compared to a smaller athlete. So you will often find pro Ironman athletes picking and choosing the races and the terrain that suits them the best. When it comes to ITU, however, there are less differences and you'll see that most athletes do the majority of the World Triathlon Series irrelevant of where they're held. I have touched on weight, but today we're really focusing on body type. Now body composition or your fat percentage can actually be altered relatively easily with some strong willpower, a structured training plan and a good diet plan to follow, but you cannot actually change your bone structure. You might hear athletes talking about getting their race weight. So they might lose a couple of kilos from their training weight, maybe a little bit more if it's a hilly or a hot race, but this isn't gonna change their body type. It's just gonna change the distribution of their fat. At the end of the day, as multi-sport athletes, both the pros and us as age groupers need to work on our weaknesses, but also play to our strengths. So say if you're from a swimming background and you're really mobile, you need to focus more on your training on doing some strength and conditioning work. If you're really slight building, you might want to do more lifting, for example, to help with your cycling. The list goes on. And as for choosing a race, yes, it's great to do a race that suits your body type, but don't be afraid to actually go out of your comfort zone and do a race that doesn't suit you so much as that's the best way to get stronger and develop as an athlete. It's the diversity of the three sports of triathlon that just makes it so brilliantly unique. And whatever your body shape or type, you'll be able to find a race distance and type of race that will suit you. But let's just say you could devise the perfect body type that you wanted to do your next race. What would that be? I'm intrigued. Do let me know in the comments section below. If you've enjoyed this, give us a thumbs up and find the globe on screen to click and subscribe to make sure you get all of our videos here at GTN. And if you want to see a video we made on how much do pro triathletes wear, well, you can find that one just down here. And if you want to see a triathlon training explain show when we looked at the ideal weight for training and racing, that's just down here. <laughs>